you will carry gold in Jesus' name. Let's make sure we complete the form correctly, giving proper, correct information to enable us to attend to you. And in all other locations in the states and nations, to attend to the converse and get all the information so that we can be able to follow them up. Remember, the phone number for the television and radio audience. So send your name, phone number, location address via SMS or WhatsApp to the number mentioned, plus 234-915-444-0010. C3. Again, plus 234 Do this to enable us be of help to you. We are waiting for the counselors to conclude attending to the converse as we expect the powerful miracle prayer tonight and is coming your way. Jesus Christ said, John 17, 1, the hour has come. And tonight, the hour has come. Are you ready? Wherever you are, this location, in the states, the regions, the hour has come. The hour has come. The hour has come. Your miracle is going home with you. Because it's going to be carry gold. It's available, you carry gold. It's ready, you carry gold. The power is coming down, you carry gold. Prepare your hearts. Get ready. Be expectant. And that miracle of your life is coming your way tonight. That miracle of your family will not miss you tonight. That your heart desire will be touched and the God of heaven will do something in your life. Prepare your heart. Praise the Lord. My time has come. Your time of miracle. Your time of healing. Your time of deliverance. Yeah. The time of supernatural manifestation. Yeah. Let the church say. Yeah. I want you to hear the final amen. You will testify. Yeah. I will testify. I will now you must understand and believe what you say. As we believe what he has said, he has said that everyone that calls upon him, he will answer. He even says, while we're still speaking, that the answer will come. And then when the final amen comes, I see the miracle on your life there. Where are you? Raise up that hand. I lay the other hand when you have the problem. Every kind of miracle will take place in your life today. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. God of power, God of love, God of mercy, God of forgiveness, and God of miracle, I pray, O oh Lord, touch everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever the sickness, 
whatever the disease whatever the trouble take everything away in jesus name those deaf ears be opened in jesus name dumb tongues be loosed in jesus name those blind eyes receive your sight right now in jesus name the withered hand stretch it out and be made whole that short leg grow out now in jesus name Elephantiasis, big leg. You cannot even wear the right dress. I pray the Lord will touch you right now. And that leg or those legs will become normal in Jesus' name. Every form of swelling, hernia, tumor, fibroid, hunchback, whatever, come out in Jesus' name. And all those demonic powers, paths of darkness, Militating against your life, walking against your life, I command that evil spirit, evil power with evil manifestation come out in Jesus' name. And I pray that every sickness in your body, every disease in your body, every ailment you have, the divine touch is upon you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm the miracle to the right, to the left, at the center, at the far back, everywhere here now at the Alpha location, those online, and those over the radio, television, anywhere you are, I pray the power of the Lord reach you where you are right now. Rise up and walk. Open your eyes and see, and let the creative power of God work a creative miracle in your life right now. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is confirmed. Lord, at this final amen, testimony in every mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord, it is done. It is done. It is done. Check up yourself, you see the miracle there. Those blind eyes are open, check up. Short leg growing out, check up. Deafness removed, check up. And all the things moving about, tormenting your life, tormenting your body, everything is gone. Now you have the peace of God that has settled in your body, in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, check up. And as you see that God has done it, now you're sitting on the wheelchair, you cannot keep on sitting there. You have to use your own strength and uh, which is given to you now and the healing there now and get up, your eyes up and walk. Yeah. And as you see what God has done, you come out here and we rejoice together. Our uh, kids is state overseer now to moderate our testimony time. The miracle is there. Check up. The miracle. Praise the Lord. Let the church say. Yeah. And the final amen. You will testify. Amen. Amen. Look at the person on your side, eyeball to eyeball, and tell him, tell her, Amen. And at the final Amen today, you will carry go. Salvation, carry go. Healing, carry go. Deliverance. Every kind of miracle you need tonight, the Lord will shower his blessing upon you in Jesus' name. 
at the final amen i will testify say that at the final amen i will testify father we thank you tonight and bless your name you're a good God, a great God, for God so loved the world. And that love is still here today, flowing in the direction of everyone. I pray, Lord, tonight, none will miss the manifestation of the love of God in Jesus' name. Bless everyone without exception. Men, women, Brothers, sisters, young people, children, everyone here, everyone everywhere, bless everyone in Jesus' name. It is done. So be it in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at Daniel chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince angel, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. There shall be a time of trouble. Does that surprise you? Before the flood, a time of trouble. At the time of the flood, a time of trouble. Does that surprise you? When Nimrod, when he raised up the tower of Babel, they were scattered, a time of trouble. Of trouble. Look at Joseph, a time of trouble. And look at the children of Israel in Exodus, and they were in Egypt, a time of trouble. And look at them as we were passing through the wilderness, a time of trouble. They got to Canaan, and all the confederacies of the kings, they were against them, a time of trouble. Move on fast and come to the New Testament when Jesus came. Look at the situation of the land, a time of trouble. And then and it now says, as we come to the end, end of the age, at the end of life, have you read your newspapers of late, a time of trouble? Have you listened to the news on television or radio, a time of trouble? Have you looked in depth in Africa, every country from here to there, a time of trouble? Are you hearing about what is going on in the West, whether it's Russia or it is Ukraine? or whether it is, uh, you know, all these other places in the West, everywhere, north and south and east and west, a time of trouble. Trouble has always been there, but there's going to be a time of the climax of trouble. But thank God you have Christ, the Prince of Peace. And in all the trouble, the Lord will preserve your life. He will watch over you. He will thrive it will destroy, it will get rid of every kind of trouble in your life in Jesus' name. Even tonight, any trouble there, the Lord will clear it away. Even tonight, here at the Alpha location, and then over there online where you are, what's troubling you tonight? What's perplexing your mind tonight? Christ, the one that stops and quells and calms the stormy sea uh, come into your life tonight and all the storm all the trouble all the trauma all the difficulty all the perplexity everything it will take away and then it says there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same to that same time and at that time it says that people shall be delivered our people shall be delivered your family will be delivered our friends will be delivered anyone that comes and it says I believe in Christ I hide in Christ. I believe that he came so that all my problems are solved. Our people will be delivered tonight. Everyone 
that shall be found written in the book. Everyone found written in the book. It's not saying in a book. If it says in a book, that means everybody that book or that book or that book everyone that is written in one register or the other but it says everyone that shall be found written in the book that's talking about the book of life where god puts the names of the people that have believed on him and everyone who has his name in that book troubles over tribulation over and all those things that try to bury you alive tonight, everything over in your life. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust. Now, how does somebody sleep in the dust? It's not saying those who sleep on the ground. No, not that. It's not saying those who sleep on the dust. Not that. Those who sleep in the dust. Who are those people? Somebody dies, and then they dig a hole. They dig some of the burial ground, and they dig the dust out and they lay the person is dead they lay him there and they put all the dust back and is lying down and sleeping in the dust that means those who have died and they are buried it says and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake it's talking about the day of resurrection it says they'll hear the voice of the son of man and they will awake some to everlasting life those who are reaching in the book of life and they will arise they'll awake they resurrect and they go to eternal life some to shame and everlasting contempt to shame and everlasting contempt when they were here they didn't serve the lord their names were not written in the book of life maybe they were religious maybe they can quote psalm 23 maybe they can read the lord's prayer in matthew chapter 6 but they did not believe on the lord jesus christ and their lives did not show that they believed the lord they will also rise but they rise to the resurrection of the unjust the resurrection of the unrighteous look at verse 3 here in verse 3 it says and they that be wise you'll be wise tonight I said you'll be wise tonight there are only two kinds of people in the world the wise and the foolish and it's not talking about the wisdom of books the wisdom you gather from the library, the wisdom you gather from the philosophers, the wisdom you gather, all those philosophers of the past, have you heard about them, Socrates and, and Plato and Aurelius and all those people, all those people, they themselves were not wise, they might be worldly wise, they were not heavenly wise, they might be temporarily wise, they were not eternally wise, they were not wise in the things of God, in the things of heaven. They were walking on the broad way, the broad way that leads to perdition. But the have made a choice, the wisest choice you can make in your life. And they that be wise, Timothy, I thank God for you because you have known the scriptures which is able to make you wise unto salvation. That the wisdom is talking about wise. They that are wise shall shine at the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. I came to show you tonight how the light will shine in your life. I came to show you tonight how to turn from being foolish and then you become wise. I came to show you tonight how your name will be rich in the book of life and heaven will recognize you. And any trouble in your life, everything will vanish away. Tonight I'm talking on becoming wise and shining 
are stars till and beyond the end till the end from now until the end how you become wise and how you become a shining star until the end and then after the end has come and you have gone to the other side and you carry that wisdom of salvation with you then you rise up and you will live in life eternal forever and ever i pray that this this heavenly wisdom will come into your life. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the time of trouble before the end. The time of trouble before the end. That's verse one. And then number two is the triumphant and the transgressors. The triumphant and the transgressors at the end. And sometimes those two people, they live in the same house, one triumphant, the other one a transgressor. Sometimes they, they go to the same church, like the wise virgins and the foolish virgins, and they are proud about the coming of the Lord. Sometimes those two people, they carry the same kind of lamb, they carry the same kind of doctrine. One is triumphant, the other one is a transgressor. What happens to them? at the end. Number three, the treasure for the transformed who endure. Those are the people, they have the treasure of salvation, the treasure of the life of Christ, the treasure of the hope that they are looking forward to when Christ will come, the treasure of the transformed who endure and be endure to the end. I pray you'll be a treasure in the sight of the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at number one here. Number one, the time of trouble before the end. Um, you know, let's conduct an interview. Welcome to this village. In this village, all the people that are living here or that have lived here since the village, you know, became a recognized village. Has there been anybody that lived all through without any trouble before their end? They said no. We go to another town and we say, has anybody lived here in this town, in this city? Nobody has ever seen trouble there before they got to the eye. They said nobody. We say it's because it's Africa. And then we go to America and we go to Canada and we go to Europe. We go to all those places and we say, here, we come. We're making some research. We're finding out anybody lives here any time, any age, any generation that had no trouble before he finally came to his end. They said there's nobody, everybody on earth, everybody that has ever lived, everybody that will ever live. The world is a place of trouble. And as people go on to the end of time and to the end of the age, there's going to be a climaxing trouble. That's why we're looking at this and we say there's a time of trouble before the end. We've read it already in uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Look at Psalm 50. I'm looking at verse 15. In uh, Psalm 50, verse 10, call upon me in the day of trouble. The Lord needs that in the world in which we live is a world of trouble. It's an environment of trouble. As long as there's a Satan in the world, as long as there are evil powers and evil people in the world, there'll be trouble. But the Lord is saying, you don't have to be swallowed up by the trouble. You don't have to drown in the sea of the trouble. I'm here. And you can call upon me, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee. Amen. Amen. And I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Maybe there's trouble in your life tonight. And maybe it started in a small way, in a little way, and you said I'll manage that. I'll tolerate that. I'll overcome that. And the thing was increasing 
And everywhere you turn now, the trouble is there. You can see right, left, center, in front, everywhere. In the night, you thought you'll rest. Look at the trouble there. And in the day, you thought, now this is daylight. Anything going to trouble me, I will see. And look at the trouble, and you look around. You cannot see with the physical, natural eyes, but you know trouble is there. And the Lord says, stop looking. Come to the Lord tonight. Come all upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me uh, redemption has come for you today deliverance salvation has come for you today my question is my question is why do we have trouble look at second chronicles chapter 15 and i'm reading from verse 3 second chronicles chapter 15 verse 3 now for a long season israel had been without the true god and without a teaching priest and without long it says for a long time now israel they had the god of the covenant and the covenant of our covenant keeping God but nobody to teach them they had the Bible they will not read they read they will not understand they understood but they will not follow they will not obey it says for a long season think about your life that, that's a problem that for a long season we had been without the true God we had some private God somewhere some strange God somewhere some idolatrous God somewhere they God and the prince of this world, but we were without the true God and without a teaching priest, without somebody to teach us. Many people are not in saying teaching the teaching of the word of God, and it is that teaching and understanding that will clear the trouble away. And then he says, without law or lawless, and because we acted lawless we behave lawless as if we are a law to ourselves and you cannot be it's like the law of gravity is there you see i don't care for the law of gravity i'm going to set up another law that will contradict the law of gravity you cannot do that. The law of gravity is to give us understanding and knowledge that when you climb a tree, be very careful because the law of gravity is at work. If you fall down from there, trouble will begin. Sickness will begin. You can crush your bones and you can die. The law of God is there spiritually, but the people were not walking by the law of God. Look at verse 4 here. In verse 4, but when they in their trouble, they in their trouble, because we didn't have the guiding light and the guiding law, and we just uh, did whatever we wanted to do, we got into trouble. They got into trouble. And when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel,